Do you love MS-DOS games or you just always wanted to check them out but you've always thought that it would just be too hard, you didn't have the technical skills to do it, then you have to check out XO-DOS. So I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know about this until version 6. Uh, this is an amazing project. So XO-DOS is basically an attempt to preserve old DOS games and make them very playable. And it's got more than 7,600 games in it. So much like Flashpoint Infinity where I tell people to go download it and go check out some old Flash games, this is the best and easiest way to check out old DOS games. They've done an excellent job with it, but there is one caveat that I have to tell you about. It does, you have to use a torrent to download it initially, and then when you're installing a game, I've got one going in the background right here, uh, it will actually do some torrent uploads as well. So if you're not okay with that, I would suggest getting a VPN or give this one a pass. But with that one slight caveat, and it's actually kind of brilliant because that's the way that they're making these files available, because they have over 800 gigabytes of files that you can download for this DOS stuff. So. It's an excellent way to play old games. Now, it's got all the modern features because of LaunchBox. They use LaunchBox as their front end, which allows them to have all the art in here. It allows them to have extras in here. It's a really cool way to do things. My favorite playlist is just the installed playlist. You can scroll through and you can see what you've installed, which helps, you know, minimize the playlist. Because with 7,600 games, there's a lot in there. But they have a whole bunch of dynamic playlists in here, which are really cool. So if you're looking for something that just has really good sound support, you've got the MT32 playlist. If you're looking for FMV uh, games that have the best video, look at the Real Magic demo. So for example, if you play Return to Zork, you'll notice that the video looks really crappy, right? But if you play this version of R Return to Zork, the Real Magic version, it actually uses much higher definition video. And they're going to keep growing this playlist as they get more and more games, so it's really cool. Some of the other th cool things you can do is if you just go to All, you can apply filters. So let's go to one of the genres. And again, this is just standard LaunchBox features. But they've clearly put the effort into categorizing everything well so that if you go through here, you're going to get exactly what you want. So you want to play a role-playing game? Well, there you go. You can filter the list, RPGs, scroll through, find your favorite one. Maybe you're an old DOS platformer. So let's clear the filters real quick. Uh, Let's go to genre. Let's check out platform, right? If you scroll through this list, you're going to find some amazing games, right? You've got, you know, knockoffs like all those adventures. But unlike most collections, this one has mostly first party uh, games that were actually released to MS DOS commercially. And the collections are just really well curated. So, for example, Commander Keen. If any of you have played the original Commander Keens, you'll know that 1, 2, and 3, a lot of times you'll get an, an EGA version or a CGA version, which is basically the limited color palette. But in here, they've done a good job making sure that you get this full color palette VGA version. So, to install games, you can just right click on them and you can say install, which is excellent. Or you could double click on them and it's basically saying, hey, I want to play the game and it's going to prompt you to install it. I've got an install going in the background, so we're going to have to wait for that one to finish before we look at it. But it's simple, simple wizard. You don't have to know DOS. You don't have to know how to do a lot of things. All you have to do is type the letter Y for yes or the letter N for no. That's it. He's made everything through easy little wizards, so when you launch a game, you can do things easily. Now, by default, everything's going to be globally configured when you set it up. They're going to ask you if you want to keep aspect ratio or if you want to stretch, and then every game will run like that. But if you want to change that, again, the wizard prompts you at the very beginning when you launch a game. It says, do you want to change things? You can either say yes or you can say no. Or you can right-click on things and you can say configure, and if you launch configure, then you can go in and you can change the settings to say, hey, for this game, I want it to stretch. So this is the best and easiest way to play old DOS games, and there's just access to so many of them. Now, if you download the full version, again, it's 800 gigabytes. I wouldn't recommend that one because it just takes too long to download. And, you know, you got limited hard drive space. If you're not a preservation aficionado, then you're probably not going to care about that one. But you can get the light version on ExoDOS, uh, and the light version is only about 5 gigabytes, which is a lot more palatable. If you check out the light version, it'll download a torrent link, you will have to open the torrent link inside of a torrent. I used the one called Transmission. Uh, but again, I don't tend to like torrents on my system, so I just downloaded Transmission, installed it, did this one file, and then I uninstalled Transmission. Once that finishes downloading, then you don't have to have any torrent software because inside of these command line stuff, it will actually run the torrent for you. These files are pretty small, so it's not taking a ton of bandwidth, right? I mean, this is Earthworm Jim that I'm installing here, and it's 600 megabytes, right? Pretty small. A lot of these old DOS games are actually, you know, 1.4 megabytes because they were meant to be installed on a floppy. And if you go back to the old CGA days, then you'll get ones that are, you know, a couple dozen kilobytes, right? You'll get very tiny games. And so it's very easy to install. They don't take up a lot of space on your hard drive. 
but if you look at them, you'll find some really cool stuff. So I highly recommend scrolling through here. Uh, some of the cool ones is if you look for these ones that have really good sound, they tend to be some of the bigger AAA titles that maybe you're going to be familiar with, right? Like Descent or Doom, right? And then once you've installed them, you'll notice that they actually play sound effects as you click through them, which is also a lot of fun. Whereas this one I haven't installed yet, and so it doesn't come with the music. Now I want to show you a really cool thing, so I'm going to search for Monkey Island. Oh, except for I'm in this list, so it's not going to work, so we have to switch to all. And now it's going to filter to Monkey. So if we look at Monkey Island, inside of the extras you can find some stuff. But you'll notice that I don't really have stuff in here yet because I haven't installed it. So we're going to do a quick install. It'll ask you if you want to install it. You can just type Y for yes, and it'll start to install. It'll say, hey, this is 1.5 gigabytes. That's what's going to be installed. And then you can watch the progress as it goes. Once it's done, it'll just prompt you to press any key to continue, which you can do. It'll extract the files. And then if you said install, it'll launch. But if you said configure, it'll just go back to the launch box UI. And then the other thing you can do is if you right click on here, there's actually this section called English Extras. Now, a lot of these games have copyright protection, and so they've added things in here like this Dial a Pirate. So if you open up Dial a Pirate, you get this thing right here that lets you slide the faces around. So if they tell you, you know, that you need to match this face with this face or whatever, and then they're going to ask you one of these dates, then you can put in the correct number based on this cool little thing here. So they've got. Uh, they've just done a great job curating this list to be absolutely excellent. All right, let's go back to Commander Keen real quick just to show you a launch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say play. Now, I could have double clicked on that or I could have hit control P, but I just right clicked to say play so you could see it. Now you'll see that the joystick's not detected. VGA card is detected, and so it launches, and it does VGA. So they're just using DOSBox to do this. Uh, there are some where you can launch it specifically in Scum VM if you'd prefer, but I tend to prefer DOSBox. Uh, and then if they ask you some of the options, uh, the configuration options, when it'll launch, it'll just say, hey, do you want to launch with, you know, uh, Sound Blaster or with PC speakers? And you basically just want to pick, you know, the lower down ones, because the lower down ones are going to be uh, the better options that do more things, right? But you can see the Commander Keen's working just fine. This is Commander Keen 1, but yeah, just it works great right out of the box. I didn't have to configure it. I didn't have to try to get the speed right. It has all of the configuration baked in, which is absolutely excellent. Let me exit here to DOS. Let's check out Duke Nukem, right? Now, while there are the, you know, 3D Duke Nukems, I haven't installed those ones yet, but I did install Shrapnel City. So let's play this one. You'll see that it's absolutely the best version of it, right? Because again, there was an EGA and a CGA version of this that have far fewer colors, but this is the VGA version. Now, you do have to know a little bit about DOS, but not a lot. It, you basically have to look around the screen. It'll tell you, hey, press F1 for help. And so I just hit the space bar there and it opened up this menu. And now you have to read, but you can see, oh, S to start a new game. Well, I'll hit S, there you go. So even though you don't have mouse support, as long as you read what's on screen, Pretty quickly you'll learn what it is you have to do, right? So here you are. Now, uh, I already know what the keys are because I'm, you know, from the DOS days. But basically, control is usually jump, alt is usually fire, and then sometimes space is something else, and sometimes shift is something else. Every now and again it'll be like Z or X, but you can always hit F1 for help, and you can look at the instructions, or the game setup, and look, there we go. Control is jump, alt is fire, cursor keys move, and the up cursor key is the action key. So that'll teach you how to play a game, and almost every game will have a help section like that, and usually it is going to be F1. And then usually you can just hit Escape, it'll ask you if you want to quit to DOS, you type Y for yes, and out you go. So there is a very small amount of knowledge that you have to have about DOS, but for the most part, you can just read it on the screen. You don't need to know how to configure stuff, you don't need to know how to list directories, you don't need to know how to mount files, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Whereas, if you do this all with DOSBox, which I love DOSBox, don't get me wrong, but you have to remember, oh yeah, I have to mount the drive, and then I have to remember how to extract the zip file, and it's just, it's a lot more knowledge that you have to have. This makes it incredibly easy. You just see a game you want, you can filter to whatever you want. Once you've found the game you want to install, you can click on it, check it out, the screenshots, and go, oh yeah, that looks like a game I want to play. Double click it. That's it. It'll start to install, it launches it, you just have to answer, yes, I really want to install, yes, I, or no, I don't want to change anything. See, that one launched almost instantaneously because it's such a small game, so the download was instant. 
I said, no, I didn't want to change any of the configuration, and there you go. I'm inside of the game. If the developer made a different version, then when the game launched, it would have asked me, do you want to launch an EGA, CGA, or VGA? And whatever one's lower down, that's usually what you're going to want to do, unless you have a specific love for an older version. All right, live in Cinema Placebo, thank you so much for joining me on this foray into ExoDOS. I'm a big fan of it, and I hope that you are too. So check out a DOS game today. All right, catch you in the next one. Cheers.